Hello and welcome to another edition of Paranormal Activity and Mysterious Stories. Let me give you a preview of what I got coming up here. Uh, the first is a video that a pilot, an airline pilot, captured of a strange object flying across the clouds. Um, I also have this great video of a UFO and apparently was taken in France. Actually, this, uh, this video here has several uh, different um, sightings of UFOs, so definitely it's uh, 10 minutes long. Uh, let's see, here is another one of these high-speed UFOs, and I can yeah, definitely say this one is really hard to look at. Um, I'll leave a link, so you'll definitely have to check this out on your own computer. Um, this here is another video of several different ufos that are apparently like this guy saying you know it opens up a hyperdrive window i'm not too sure if that's what's going on but uh, this is definitely something weird if it's if it's a legit video uh this video is of some strange noises in canada uh you know not like the the metallic ones that uh, most people hear this sounds more like like something like maybe a bigfoot or something uh let's see this is a great hour-long video by Dr. Stephen Greer, and he interviews um, he interviews this guy here, who worked on a on a Navy ship pulling buoys out of the water or checking buoys and cleaning buoys. And uh, one time they were assigned to go pick up a um, a UFO that a fishing trawler had captured in its net. So uh, he talks about that. Um, this is a video about a new species that was discovered, you know, nothing alien or anything like that, but, um, yeah, this, this jellyfish here is a, a new species, or, oh no, this one here, this is a new species of jellyfish that was, uh, discovered in, I think it was 2015 or something like that. And then last is a video that talks about, um, the time that it rained for two million years on the planet. Yeah, this was all, you know, obviously early in the beginning stages of this planet's formation. But apparently, you know, yeah, some time ago, before the dinosaurs actually were on the planet, it uh, apparently it rained for two million years. And this is a video about it. You know, I'm not going to play the whole video, but I'll leave a link to it and you can definitely check it out if you're interested. So uh, let's go to the first one here. Let me go full screen. So let me go to the beginning here. Perez was flying at an altitude of 30,000 feet at the time of his sighting. Temperatures can reach close to negative uh, 76 degree Fahrenheit at this altitude. Let me turn this up, audio down. Okay, so yeah, in the beginning we see he's showing you his altitude. And then here it comes. Check this thing out. Let's stop this right there. Yeah, that seems kind of small too. So, you know, if it's if it's not a ship, I wonder if this is a drone. And, you know, just like this plane, this plane is carrying passengers. This plane is, is uh, performing a function. You know, why wouldn't this drone also be performing some function? You know, I mean, these, these drones that we see, they're not just, they, you know, they're not just... Um, objects that appear for for our curiosity you know i mean we must be seeing them when they're in between whatever duties or functions they're performing and again you know i'm a firm believer that uh, we're not alone on this planet that uh, whoever is controlling this is most likely a species on this planet Okay, so let me go on to the next video. I got a lot to show. Um, like I said, this video is actually, it's a 10 minute long video and it actually has several different um, sightings. I mean, yeah, this is an amazing, you know, I'm not sure if this one was in France. but this is definitely the classic saucer-shaped UFO. Let me jump to the 
yeah that's that and then like I said you know this video actually has several yeah I'm not too sure where this is from and then let's see if I go further I think they're looking at yeah, I mean you can kind of see these things here I'm not, oh yeah here we go yeah here's a few more and let's see if I go yeah, further in the video. But, you know, this, yeah, like I said, this is a 10-minute long video. It has a bunch of different um, uh, video of different sightings. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check that out. Uh, yeah, now this one here, like I said in the beginning, it's very hard to see. This is, um, yeah, I don't know what language this is here. Oh, there it went by. I just saw. Yeah, that was real quick. Uh, let's see. It's going to come right across the screen here. Let me see if I can. Oh, here, okay. He's pointing it out here. So I'll try and stop the video. No, you know what? The thing is moving too fast for me to um to stop. Oh, here we go. There it goes. Let me see if I can back it up. I think this is the object right here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, this is really hard to see. I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out yourself because it's uh, very difficult to see, I'm sure. It's not, I'm not going to do it any justice uh, trying to just uh, catch it myself. Okay, so let's go to this video here. Um, this is another compilation video. It has several different um, sightings. I'm not too sure if it's the same thing, though. Oh yeah, let me turn that audio down. Yeah, I think that thing just disappears. Yeah, this little th thing here eventually just uh, disappears. You know, I don't know if it's, it's necessarily going into a portal or just moving away so fast that it looks like it's disappearing. Yeah, I think there we go. It's kind of disappearing now. But yeah, this video has several more. This is an eight minute long video. I mean, these images seem legit. Yeah, there's definitely some craziness going on in this video. And uh, videos like this, you know, I mean, this is low quality because this is all, you know, whoever took this, this is all they had. It's not like there are professional videographers and photographers out there, you know, waiting to capture these things with their professional level equipment. I mean, a lot of this stuff is captured by people who just happen to have a phone and, um, you know, their phones aren't necessarily equipped to capture uh, things that are moving at high speed because you have to have a you know a fast shutter speed in order to capture um, fast moving objects very sharp but you know I can't play this whole video but um, yeah this video is just several different um, videos of UFOs so I'll leave a link in the description you can check that out now this one we'll have to listen to because like I said, it's, uh, you know, this is um, another one of those strange noise videos. So check this out.
about whatever that noise was, it definitely um, had an impact on that baby. And I think that baby was like, let's go. Got to go. I think the baby knows better. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that that's a definitely a weird sound. Uh, we'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out yourself. Uh, yeah, that sounds more like a Bigfoot type. Okay, now this video here is another is a Stephen Greer video. I know it's, you know he's kind of a controversial figure, but you know he's obviously connected. I mean, the number of time he talks about um, briefing presidents. You know, if, if he's in the roller decks when the president needs to be briefed, and this is the guy that uh, that they automatically know to call. Um, yeah, he's obviously connected with the government. And the fact that, you know, he's trying to tell us that that um, alien abductions are military disinformation campaigns or, you know, whatever he's talking about, that, that's, I don't believe that I yet. I don't believe that. But I do believe some of the other aspects of the you know re ufo reality that he is revealing because i you know like i i believe since he works for the government you know i i don't think he's allowed to reveal the entire truth i think he's given a specific narrative that he's allowed to reveal and he can't go beyond that so i kind of you know i kind of see or understand why he has to say that or, or at least that's what i think but um, yeah, this guy talks about pulling a, a UFO that a fishing trawler had, um, had caught in their fishing nets. And what I find interesting is they never explain how they knew that this fishing trawler captured a, a UFO. Because, you know, he explains how... Uh, you know, it was very unusual how they were called to general quarters and, you know, sent out and they specifically knew which fishing trawler to target and they knew exactly what they had. So my question is, how, how did, you know, whoever ordered his crew to go and get that ship, how did they know that that ship had it? But uh, let's listen to what he has to say here. Feet. It was perfectly round. Um, it was a disc shape, or you know, saucer, whatever you call it. Um, it had a very dull, it a very dull silverish color, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, like it wasn't polished. Um, and it, 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 it was just weird. It didn't seem to give off any, uh, reflective properties or anything. And what time of the day was this now? Again, I don't want to play too much of this video, but I will leave a link in the description. This is an hour long, uh, interview. I listened to it last night. Uh, this guy seems very sincere, but like I said, you know, that is one question that they don't address is how the people that ordered him to go or his crew to go get the ship. How did they know? Um, you know, there, there was some speculation that, uh, that their superiors were trying to say that it was a, a secret U uh, U S military test, which, you know, I mean, it, again, I, it, unless I mean, our, yeah, I, I definitely think our military must be tracking any UFOs coming into and out of our atmosphere, but, it would seem probable that, you know, if this was one of our test um, vehicles, that you know, that's the way they knew because, you know, they were obviously testing it. Something must have mal uh, malfunctioned. And um, it went down and, you know, they, they knew where to get it. So, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out. Uh, let's see. This video here is, like I said, it's a, a new species a new jellyfish type species that was discovered uh, let me play a little bit of it here species that hadn't yet been discovered 
After five years of work, they were finally able to classify this new species and introduce it to the world. Currently, there are more than 100 comb jellies known to us, with all of them bearing the cilia similarity that allows them to push themselves through the ocean. This often garners the attention of deep sea videographers who want to capture the light show their cilia create as light diffracts from the movement. Uh, check that out. So this is a, a new species. You know, it's amazing. Even after all this time, we are still discovering new species in the ocean so you know it, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch for us to discover advanced species highly advanced species in fact advanced species that pilot and control the alien crafts that we see all the time in our oceans but anyways let's go to the last video here uh this is a video i thought was interesting i would include it but it talks about the the time that it rained for two million years let me play a quick uh sample of this today like say in the pacific northwest and this would have happened over and over and over and over and over again all around the world it was not one big flood it was more like floods every year all over the place for two million years and with all this rain things were bound to change and one of the biggest changes was a sudden abundance of dinosaurs. In rock dated to the start of the carnian pluvial episode dinosaurs account for about five percent of the fossils of terrestrial vertebrates you know, interesting how he says that, like it's just nothing, like, oh, it rained all this time, and then all of a sudden, dinosaurs appeared. Well, where did the dinosaurs appear from? Did they just spontaneously combust? Um, or, you know, spontaneously appear? Uh, where, I mean, if the dinosaurs came from eggs, where did the first eggs come from? Which is, you know, why I definitely think this, this planet had to have been seeded. Uh, like, you know, I mean, in, I did a previous video where the scientists have found those balls that are like 4 billion years old and, yeah, they don't, they don't know, you know, what the purpose of, the, uh, of those balls were, but there was some speculation that those balls were um, what initially seeded the planet when there was nothing on this, on this planet but just, you know, land. I mean, after, the, after all the water the first land formed and then you know where did all the f original seeds come from in order to provide all the greenery on this planet anyways uh something to think about i'll leave a link to this video in the description uh, if you like things like this please give this video a thumbs up please share this video and if you're new to the channel please subscribe i have more things like this take care